Hello everyone and welcome to episode three of Expanding Empires. I'm your host Aaron. Um, welcome back. Thank you for joining again. Um, I've taken a look at the comments you've uh, put in some of the shows. Thank you very much for doing so. So I've tried to make some adjustments uh, this week to make the viewing better for you. Um, also, if you like this sort of content, please like, subscribe the show and also the channel. And uh, there's some other shows on there. We've got uh, Genes to the Cults and uh, List Doctor with uh, Tom. We've got um, uh, Bug Watch with It's Swissly, and then we've also got You, Me, and the UKTC from Ed. So if you're interested in all this sort of stuff, please go on the channel and take a look at the other content. Um, without further ado, let's get on to the first list. Cool, so our first list here is Donald Plummer who's at the pecking order Peeps of War GT in the US. It's uh, 51 players and it's five rounds. Um, the list is 1,997 points, uh, starting with zero CP. Uh, the compulsory type is fast attack and the uh, tau sept is tau sept. So the HQs that we've got in this list for Donald is a commander in crisis battlesuit that has precision of the hunter, a six, two cyclic iron blasters, iridium battlesuit, a missile pod and then the special thermonetronic projector and um, the bagel hunters plate and a two marker drones now as we said like we're starting to see this pick up on the precision of the hunter for having the multiple cyclics i am still on the cold star but i'm gonna have to try this out because so many people are doing it they must be saying good about it i've just been uh, really enjoying the maneuverability of the cold star being able to pop up and pop down and take out like um units holding back objectives things like that uh, we then got Commander Shadow Sun, um, a Creep Shaper, uh, which is a very nice, cheap way of uh, holding this relic, which I've started using as well, which, like, which is the Advanced EM Scrambler. And this is basically a no deep strike open 12 of this um, unit. So very handy for holding your back objectives, good with all of the um, demons that we're starting to see pop up, etc., and any nasty little GSC, which are performing very, very well. Um, we've then got a uh, Long Strike, uh, who's got his um warlord trait as well with the accelerator burst cannons on top and two seeker missiles um again it's another great way to give a, a unit plus one to hit and with long strike having a blizzard skill of three without any marker drones as well it makes it really really reliable uh when you need to make a shot onto a big dangerous monster or knight um we then go into the elites and we've got a unit of crisis battle suits with uh Five in total, four of them being airburst air in fragmentation projectors, uh, a cyclic iron, a plasma rifle, and target lock. And then we've got um, the uh, Shazere with a cyclic iridium battlesuit, plasma, plasma, and then shield generator and stim injectors. We've got three mark drones and two shield drones in this unit. Um, haven't seen the airburst in fragmentations for a while, so be intrigued to see how this goes um, with the sort of cover you get on top. It, hasn't been great but i'm wondering with the potential influx of things like guard it's good for trying to just pick off the mortars in return etc any uh weak and fleshy units that are holding some obscure objectives uh we then got a unit of three stealth suits with a shield drone um there's no homing beacon on there so there's obviously not going to be a turn one deep strike for that but um, I've, we're starting to see on some of these lists a lot more stealth suits making their way in. I'm not sure if this is for um, potentially for behind enemy lines or just for a, a chaff clearing suit because we can see on this it's a cyclic and plasma, so on the crisis suit, so probably more for elites and vehicles for, for that to be taken out. Um, and in fast attack, we've got three uh, units of four crew hounds uh, and a unit of five Vespid stinglings. So again, this looks... This really looks like similar to some of the lists I've been running where it's aiming to take behind enemy lines and capitalize on that with the crew, the Vespid and the Stealth. Um, and then topping out the list, we've got uh, three Riptides, all with the um, Ion Accelerators. Now, Donald done really well and went 4-1 um, and ended up ranking eighth overall. Uh, this is one of the more competitive results we've seen coming through. Again, there's been um, not that many uh, good showings for Tau because I think they're in a Difficult, not a difficult place, but a different place at the moment where people are trying to find their footing on how it needs to score and what the builds need to look like. But um, yeah, well done to Donald. This looks like a really um, interesting list. And uh, again, we're seeing the um, 
intent of the three riptides that are able to shoot and fade every turn i think that may be a, a big part of our um, landscape going forwards we then have for our second list we have terry haverty and he is at the battle of boltstorm an rtt in the uk 15 players in three rounds um one cp to start and a nice on the nose 2000 points from terry um, he's gone for elites as um, the compulsory, and set choice is farsight enclaves. We have commander farsight himself, um, and then we have a commander and enforcer battle suit with precision, cyclics, plasmas, and then the special thermonutronic projector and a marker drone and shield drone as well. The Gale Hunter's plate making him on a one up um, armor save minus one damage and a five up feel no pain uh, is going to make him a very stubborn to remove. Um, we then got the uh, troops. We've got uh, a unit of 10 crew and then two strike teams. Uh, following on from that, we've got um, in the elites, we've got a unit of crisis suits where we've got three uh, suits with cyclics, plasma, and missile pods. Um, then we've got a shield generator on that as well. And then we've got uh, one leader with a cyclic early warning override missile pod and plasma. And then again, we've got another. Oh, sorry, now we've got the leader with the uh, 65 last uh, Iridium battle suit, missile pod, plasma rifle, shield generator, and the stim injectors. This unit has also got five shield drones on it, so it's going to be a really horrible unit to try and get rid of if the four ups are made. But again, we're seeing this build, it seems to be the most um, cost effective way of uh, running your crisis suits at the moment, and that is the cyclic missile pod and plasma or the cyclic burst and plasma so again this one's gone for a bit uh, longer range in there um but we'll see how this turns out um then we've got the fire site marksman uh basically just holding the exemplar of the claim and then the pure tied engram neurochip to try and uh, regen some of the cp uh into the continuing the elites we've got um a unit of stealth battle suits again with a marker drone and a shield drone this turn so possibly this might have been used for uh, picking up some R&D, uh, but again, also potentially for behind enemy lines. Um, fast attack, we have a Pathfinder unit. We have the full three rail rifles as well. So as well as having the seven marker lights that it can chuck out, it's also got um, a real hard hitting capability in those um, rail rifles. It's surprising how hard they hit. They're essentially the same as the rail rifles that come on the um, broadsides, just a single shot each. So, but obviously these guys are much more maneuverable. Um, we've also got in the heavy support, we've got a hammerhead guns, gunship with a couple of seeker missiles, and then we've got um, a riptide with heavy burst cannon and a riptide with iron accelerator. Um, Terry done amazingly well with 3 0, ended up winning the whole event, so congratulations to Terry. Um, I do like the mix in the riptides of the burst cannon and the iron accelerator. Um, potentially, if you're known the meta you're going into, there's a lot of. Um, uh, Eldar, uh, Space Marines, etc. I really like the burst cannon for clearing through that over the iron accelerator. But again, it's a good show, and we're starting to see some nice finishes coming in off the uh, tail lists that are coming through. Uh, but well done to uh, both of our list um, pilots. Coming up into the week ahead, um, we've got a couple of interesting ones here, and I, I do think uh, we haven't quite seen them as much recently. But first up, we've got Cooper Fitzgerald, who's at the Dice Arcade GT in Australia. There's going to be 80 players there in five rounds. Um, keep it starting with three CP, uh, just shy of the 2000 mark with the points, and the compulsory type is troops and it's far sight enclaves. For HQs, Cooper's gone for a Cadre Fireblade. Uh, example of Kion is obviously a given that's always going to be in there nowadays. Um, and then two marker drones. Uh, we've also got Commander Farsight with his Warlord trait, and then a Commander in Cold Star with the uh, Precision. This time, three air burst in fragmentation projectors, though, and the dominator fragmentation projector. So we haven't seen air burst in fragmentation projectors for quite a while. So it's quite interesting to see these mixes of it popping up. Um, if you if you ever do see this, Cooper, uh, please, what was your reasoning for doing so? It'd be interesting to find out because yet yeah, they've not been seen since uh, the nerf, really. Uh, then in troops, we've got three breach teams, um, and then elites, we've got a unit of five crisis. We've got burst cannon, cyclic, and plasma with target locks, and then we've got the um, Shazray with the stim injectors and a shield generator as well. 
that then has four marker drones and one shield drone. Um, again, this looks like a shoot and fade one. It's going to be providing a lot of the marker lights for the rest of the army if required. Um, but again, this is very similar to the ones that I've been running. I do like this uh, loadout and this sort of uh, number with the drones too. Uh, on fast attack, we've got the uh, requisite three crew hounds. Again, these are just so good, even if it's like, holding a random back objective, popping out uh, to move block against uh, knights and vehicles or behind enemy lines. I've been managing to use them for myself recently. Um, and they're just becoming a, a full blown staple now. If you can't fit them in, then there's got to be a very good reason for it, I feel. Um, following up in heavy support, we have two Riptides, both with iron accelerators. Again, multi-trackers, these ones got shielded missile drones for a little bit more protection. And then we've got three dedicated transports, which are the Devilfish. And the, it, this is what we haven't seen for a while, and I'm really interested in trying myself. It's, it's Fisher Fury, the, the dynamism of this and being able to just really push the pressure onto your opponent early and jump out with OBSEC, um, I really, really like. And then also, if you want to take um, aerospace relays, again, you can pre-game move with the Devilfish, hop the, all the breach teams out, and essentially complete all four in the first turn. Um, so, yeah, best of luck to you, Cooper. I do really like this um, layout that you've gone for. Uh, so let us know how you get on. And finally, to finish up for next week, we've got Christopher Schade at the... Um, I'm going to butch this, so do, I do apologise. The... Um, Skewenen Kloppen Open, uh, Warzone Urkel Ends, uh, and that is in Germany. It's 141 players, uh, five rounds. Christopher's gone for uh, heavy sport as his um, compulsory type and is using Tauset. In the HQ squats, we've got um, Commander in Cardstock Battlesuit with Precision of the Hunter, uh, the standard high output burst cannon, a couple of plasma rifles, and then the special flamer, and also the Begal Hunter's plate. Uh, and two marker drones too. Um, then we have a commander in, another commander in Carlstar battle suit with um, strength of conviction, air burst and fragmentation, the dominator fragmentation launcher, a high up burst cannon, a plasma rifle, a shield generator, target lock, onager gauntlet, and two marker drones. Again, this is another one where we're seeing the air burst and fragmentation projectors come in. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what this t uh, twist in the meta is for. And I'm, I'm wondering if it is for guard, but um, I'm sure we'll see soon. Uh, we've then got an ethereal with uh, your usual sense of stone and wisdom of the guides, which is the five up, feel no pain, and uh, an extra CP a turn. He's on the hover drone for maneuverability and then has uh, two marker drones and the humble stave so that his um, invocations go off on a two plus. Again, we've got a long strike uh, upgraded with the burst cannons and two seeker missiles. Um, in elites, we've got uh, just two, uh, sorry, just a two units of stealth battle suits. Uh, the Shazray does have a um, fusion blaster on them in both uh, the units. Then a unit of uh, fast attack, we've got two units of crew hounds. And then heavy support, we've got all the big hitters here, over half the army. We've got two hammerhead gunships, fully upgraded with uh, accelerated burst cannons and double seeker missiles. And then we've got three Riptides, all with iron accelerators and plasmas. Um, this is a very, very aggressive, I'm going all shooting and I'm going to overwhelm you with my shooting list and I love it. Um, I'd love to run something similar to this if I had all of these models, uh, but I do not. It's it's quite interesting to see this is the first list without any um, crisis suits in, but then the output that he's got and the ability for the Riptides to uh, shoot and fade without having to use any uh, CP may be a, an interest into why it's gone ahead. But again, I like this is a really interesting list and I do wish the best to Christopher. Um, overall, we're starting to see this split into the and the push into the heavy support, it seems, on the list that I'm coming across as I'm doing the research for this. Um, but I, I wish our uh, com competitors the best for the, uh, the weekend ahead and I hope everyone does well. If you've got any um, questions or comments on the series please let us know we're just trying to uh, improve this and all the other ones at the moment but as usual thank you very much for uh, watching us and um, we'll see you again in a week's time go well. up